It is very, very strong. Someone sat on her bed and she has been touched by spirit. Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. He said, I don't see what you see. I felt two hands push me forward. It was like a cry. It was, it was a, a cry? Yeah. I know that feeling. We both know it. Yeah. Look for a candle flame. Are you all right? Do you want to stop for a second? This week, the rescue mediums visit Bridge North, where the homeowner's peace of mind isn't the only thing in jeopardy. I was coming from our rec room to come up the stairs here, and I got to about the second last step, and I just felt this enormous pressure on my back. I felt, literally felt two hands push me forward, and I went forward so hard that I actually hit my head off the kitchen door. My heart was ready to beat right out of my chest. The rescue mediums are on their way to help. Oh <laughs> this may prove to be an arresting experience. It's a police car. It doesn't matter if you people. Jackie and Christine are internationally renowned psychics who spend their days and nights showing wayward spirits into the light. Do you have many bad boys in the back of this car? Lots of bad boys back oh. there. We've come at the wrong time then. <laughs> yeah, where are they? <laughs> I was sitting on the couch watching television and I noticed this ball of light. And it just gently drifted right across from the TV screen and went right up into the ceiling and disappeared. The rescue mediums had been given no prior knowledge of their destination. You really couldn't get out of here, could you, Lord? No! Oh. <laughs> Even the name of this seemingly tranquil town has been kept secret until now. Although, days earlier, they had some uncanny premonitions. And this is like a, a traumatic event. Oh, Something yes, very traumatic that's happened either in the area or to the family. Justin. I was asleep and the alarm went off. I sort of just rolled back over and I just heard, hello. You know, like I was to almost to that point where I answered back, like that's how real it was. Dark shadow of a figure. I think it's a man, and he stands very still. After we had first moved in, we'd been here about six days, the hallway light upstairs started flickering on and off. I immediately felt overwhelmed. I, I felt really uneasy, so I picked up the phone right away. And it was just pure static. Lights flickering, lights moving, lights going on and off. In addition to their premonitions, the rescue mediums have created these psychic drawings of what they expect to find on their visit. And this is the view from someone's place, or you would be able to stand outside and see this view. How lovely. Guided by their premonitions, Jackie and Christine are escorted to the troubled residence where the homeowners eagerly await their arrival. I'm really hoping that Jackie and Christine will be able to help the people that I feel are lost or come in visitation here because they have nowhere to go. I hope that they can guide them to a better place and hopefully allow me to get some nights with sleep. Well, come on. <laughs> See ya. Bye. 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 If something is here or a spirit is here, I know that it will make my wife a lot more comfortable, make me a lot more comfortable once it's resolved. Jackie and Christine are the rescue mediums. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Hi, I'm Justin. Psychics who make house calls. Nice to meet you. Welcome to our house. Lovely. The rescue mediums sit down with the homeowners to discuss their premonitions. Have you experienced poltergeist activity? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, a traumatic event with the area? Or with the family? With the area. OK. Don't tell us any more on that just now. Justin. Mm. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. 
That's too funny. <laughs> Chandeliers or lights flickering, moving, moving about. Um, lights going on and off. I've got an obsession with lights. A dark shadow of a figure. Mm. I think it's a man. Uh, also, a young, fair girl or woman. But once when she was in bed, a voice spoke to her. She has heard bangings and noises and voices. Someone sat on her bed and she has been touched by spirit. This girl, this woman, needs help. She's open to the spirit world. <laughs> Johnson, Janssen, Johansson. You can take... Mm -hmm. Johnson. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Are you all right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to stop for a second? Emotions are running high, but could the homeowner's fears and feelings be what binds the spirit to them? Did you hear them? Yes. Near these troubled waters of Bridge North, Hello. Hello. the rescue mediums are investigating a young couple's first home. The hallway light upstairs started flickering on and off. And the spirits who haunt them. Are you all right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to stop for a second? The rescue mediums begin their investigation outside the residence. First, huh? This way. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I'm getting down there. <laughs> Bad enough. I'm going to kneel down. Oh. Get down this way. Not very elegant, like. Right? They feel compelled to examine the ground beneath the home. Are you feeling anything off the land? Just the vibrations. Mm. Mm. That's heating up. Can you feel it? That is going hot in my hands. Yeah. I know that feeling. We both know it. Yeah, it's underneath. It's underneath this house. Continuing their investigation, they explore the perimeter. The rescue mediums feel drawn to this property's ancient trees. It's just, it's very like those tall trees in, in you know, in the, the sketch. It's just like them, a lot of those trees around. Christine perceives the trees as a link to the land's first residence. I mean, I know you're picking this up too. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a First Nations influence Absolutely. very strongly on the land. Very, very strongly. I mean, I'm convinced that's what the vibrations are as well. Yeah. I wonder if this is another place where there was a burial ground, though. I wonder if we could find anything out. Yeah. Because it Maybe. feels like that. Gonna go this way, yeah? Yeah. Jackie and Christine return to the house. It's a very strange feeling. I don't like it, actually. It's a bit yeah. making me feel a bit sicky. Descending to the basement, they begin their internal investigation. But it does, something but else. There is something else. They sense a troubled spirit. Did you hear that? Yes. A woman crying. Yeah. It was like a cry. It was so. a cry. Yeah. And this woman definitely was on either some medication or something yeah. that feels so dizzy. The rescue mediums feel the spirit's pain. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> oh, God. I've got pain as well in my head. Yes. You've just done yeah. the same thing. I know. Her confusion is powerful. An immediate rescue may end her suffering. OK, so we need to fill the room full of light. And if anybody needs our help, you can come forward. This lady is very, very confused. Yeah. Very confused. She links with somebody else, though. 
it's as if she's, it's like, you know, like senile dementia or yeah. Alzheimer's or something like that. And he's hanging around. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting for, for her. her. He's waiting for her. The rescue medium scents a male spirit who lingers. And the gentleman that's here, this is her husband. Yeah. Do you want to sit down? Please? I think I do, actually. Yeah, because I'm a bit... You think be right? Having identified yeah. the spirits, Christine and Jackie begin the rescue. Well, I can see a gentleman not stood in the room, but I can see him clairvoyantly stood. OK. He's here. OK. He's outside the light. Yep. And he's now... He's holding his hand. The troubled spirit crosses over with her husband. Mm hmm OK. Oh, yeah, she's seen that now. Oh, that is so, so <laughs> beautiful, isn't it? That is lovely. It is nice. It's really... Yeah. Wow. You could write a song about that, couldn't you? Yeah. What's up? I've just got the pain here. <laughs> But something dark and evil still lingers. Jackie and Christine must confront the home's remaining spirit. He said, I don't see what you see. Yes, he does. The dark presence that threatens the homeowner. The candle flame. In the town of Bridge North, the rescue mediums have shown one spirit into the light. This lady is very, very confused. But a dark, menacing presence persists. I've just got the pain here. <coughs> Jackie and Christine search for the dark spirit, who they sense is on the main floor. It is very, very strong. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just want this feeling to go off. This way, yeah? Yeah. Following the psychic vibrations, the rescue mediums track the dark spirit room by oh, room. We go in here first. D just hang on a second. Do you feel um, unbalanced, sort of here? Totally. I'm right. like this. Yeah. Before. Yeah. It is very, very strong. His presence is disturbing and threatens to overshadow. Cold air there. Oh, God, yeah. He is with the rescue mediums. Oh, there's something wiggling underneath it there. What line? Like worms. Ooh. I know. He's been really nasty, hasn't he? Yeah. He has, yeah. As the night grows darker, Jackie and Christine attempt their second rescue. So we need to try and get him over. He said, I don't see what you see. Yes, he does. The dark spirit begins speaking through Christine. And he says he doesn't see what you see. Yes, he does see that. He's not looking properly. He needs to look again. Tell him to look again. Blackness. What do you see within the blackness? Nothing. Nothing. Tell him to look for the light. Tell him to see a candle flame. Look for a candle flame. Look for a candle flame. Look for a candle flame. Can you see the candle flame? You see the candle flame yes. flickering? OK, get him to walk towards the candle flame. The dark spirit will not relinquish his grip on Christine. Christine, yes. stay this side. I'm trying very, very hard. Stay this side. Going through, you stay this side. He attempts to take her with him into the light. Yeah? Yes. Stay this side. Only by combining their forces can Jackie and Christine take him into the light. All right. 
did, yeah, the candle just went boom. Yeah. Whoa. I don't think I've ever felt that close to going. I know, I've, that's why I've got hold of you. <sighs> you ain't going nowhere, babies, I've got you. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm I really am just gonna have to go and sit down. I really okay. I'm sorry, I just uh yeah, I feel let's, let's exhausted and I um, feel weird. Next, the rescue mediums present their findings to the homeowners. A man who we feel committed suicide. And compare it with independent research. So he's obviously got something to say to you. On a dark night in Bridge North, the rescue mediums have shown two spirits from this formerly troubled home into the light. All right. Yeah, the candle just went boom. Yeah. Now they sit down with the homeowners to present their findings, along with independent research and see what matches up. So this is the part where we pull everything together. Um, also, what we found during the investigation we felt very strongly, both of us, that there was uh, or is um, a burial ground, you know, a First Nations burial ground here somewhere. I know that feeling, we both know it. Yeah, it's underneath, it's underneath this house. I wonder if this, uh, uh, this is another place where there was a burial ground, though. I wonder if we could find anything out. This whole area used to have a lot of need of battles. Now there's the need of reserve, which is yeah. not even 20 minutes from our house. According to folklore, since the mid-1600s, many battles were fought on the land where Bridge North now stands. Hundreds of lives were lost and the Mississauga tribe was severely diminished. We have a, a couple. Yeah, here. a lovely old couple that we found out um, lived here for a while. Yeah. This lady is very, very confused. And the gentleman that's here, this is her husband? Yeah, her husband had already been able to pass through the light. Many but years previously. Unfortunately, the lady who we've now found out is Isabel couldn't get through. But this lady had Alzheimer's. Yeah. There's a certain feeling you get when you know that somebody's in the spirit world who's had that problem, and this is what we were getting. Shortly after moving to this home with her husband, Charles, Isabel Murray finally succumbed to Alzheimer's. It's as if she's, it's like, you know, like senile dementia or yeah. Alzheimer's or something like that. And he's hanging around. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's for waiting for her. Two years after her husband, Charles, died, Isabel herself peacefully passed away. OK, right, now then, we come to this level of the house mm. and your bedroom. He's been really nasty, hasn't he? Uh, he has, yeah. We had to help um, a man uh, over the other side who we feel committed suicide. In 1894, George Scott, the brother of Robert Scott, one of the original owners of the land, committed suicide. What's his death certificate? He was only 30. He was only 30 years of age. On a December morning of that year at 4 a.m., George Scott was chopping some wood in his brother's home. He left to visit the stables, but before he reached them, he shot himself through the heart. But trying to get him over was very difficult because as he was being drawn to the light, I could see the light here, but I was going with him. I couldn't separate. No, I, I couldn't pull away from the light. And Jackie had to talk to me and say, no, you know, stay this side, stay this side. Is he walking forward? Christine, yeah. stay this side. I'm trying very, very hard. Stay this side. It's going through you, stay this side. Jackie and Christine believe that George was the dark spirit haunting Nicole's bedroom since she arrived in this home. Makes so much sense, though, because I usually literally sleep with the comforter, and I usually have it, I sleep on my side, I'll have it locked so that I can't see out, because I constantly have the feeling like there's something just standing there watching. We not anymore. We got him through. And so things should be a whole lot better. There is one last premonition the rescue mediums must address. Johnson, Janssen, Johansson. You can take... Mm -hmm. Johnson. Johnson. Are you all right? Mm -hmm. I've got Johnson, but it was Johnston. 
Um, this is your friend, okay, and we also gave the name of James. He's given both his first name and his second name, so he's obviously got something to say to you. Justin's friend, James Johnston, was tragically killed when he was hit by a car on August the 8th, 1993. The rescue mediums believe that his spirit wishes to relieve Justin's worry. The rescue mediums accompany Justin and Nicole to the water's edge. Here they perform a smudging ceremony to cleanse the young couple and the land where they live. That this land and water be cleansed. Be cleansed. We ask that we by ask lifting that by curses, lifting curses old, and new, old and new, we can return, we can the, return land the land and the water, and water to, peace. to peace. I need a group hug. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We like the hugs. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Enjoy your home. <laughs> Thank you, we will. Jack okay. and Christine bid farewell to the home. Bye, bye. At a nearby lodge, the rescue mediums find some refreshment and a little mousse for dessert. It's so nice, though, that it's sort of like the weather's nice and everything. It's not windy. I mean, you don't need the hairspray or anything, do you? No, it's a good job. But I've got the mousse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have one, love. You need one. You really need one, you do. Gorgeous. You kissed a moose. I, I don't believe you kissed a moose. Cheers. Cheers.